Sean McCabe. Welcome to the show. Hey, welcome to the Johnny McCabe Show, where it's all about accelerating your authority in your business or field of expertise. And we do that by helping entrepreneurs, business owners, authors, experts, and speakers get seen, get heard, get noticed on any device, anywhere, anytime, within as little as 15 hours, also known as the Authority Acceleration Blueprint. Now, what does it take to become a self-made millionaire? Many people have wondered and few have succeeded. The book Self-Made, Confessions of a 20-something Self-Made Millionaire, follows the real-life story of Stefan Arno, award-winning real estate investor and award-winning entrepreneur, through the struggle of starting with zero cash, zero credit, and zero experience in his pursuit of financial freedom. Now, prior to receiving the proper training, Stefan almost went bankrupt on several occasions. He only had $1,200 when he started investing, and he was a starving artist making only $10,000 a year as a guitar teacher. Now, he read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a book that changed so many people's lives and their view of financial literacy, and he really took that message to heart. Determined to transform his life financially, he found an investor to lend him the money to pay for his training, and he enrolled in the Rich Dad education, and there has been no turning back. Today, he's a full-time real estate investor, having completed 58 transactions worth $4.2 million dollars since December 2012. To help him manage the levels of the level of deals he's currently doing, Stefan has assembled a large power team. Now he uses blogging as a way to grow his business and has subsequently written a book on real estate investing with a new book to be published very soon. Now, I had personally become aware of Stefan several years ago when he was working for an Alberta-based company helping them fill rooms for the purposes of raising capital for many other projects. Now word quickly spread in the real estate investing community right across the country about this young guy in the city of Winnipeg and was doing so well at raising capital. Now as mentioned on many previous shows, one of the things that I like to do is make myself aware of who the movers, the shakers, and the players are in any industry that I'm either studying or involved in. I like to see what other successful people are doing and incorporate some of the things that are working so well for them into my own business. Now in a few short years, Stefan Arno accelerated his authority to become one of the premier real estate investors on the Canadian scene. Now Stefan is an award-winning real estate entrepreneur, author of Money People Deal, The Fastest Way to Real Estate Wealth, and the 2014 winner of the Rich Dad Hall of Fame Award. And when I return, I'm gonna be joined by my guest today, Stefan Arno. Hey, thanks for joining us today. It's Monday, which means it's Real Estate Investing Day here on the John A. McCabe Show. The day I interview various real estate investors as well as educate you on a variety of different strategies that can help you achieve financial freedom in your life. Now, when it comes to real estate investing or any business for that fact, it's important to build teams and implement systems. Otherwise, you'll never reach your full potential. Now, trying to do everything yourself has limitations. The, the biggest one of which is your time. Now, you, you you just won't have enough time in the day to grow or scale your business to the heights of its possibility. Now, two things my guest has excelled at very quickly, accelerating his authority and growing and scaling his business, which is something uh, Stefan has been able to do very effectively. As a result, Stefan has accumulated properties at an alarming pace, controlling 25% of his local niche through his understanding of real estate joint ventures. Now, Stefan Arno is a, an award-winning real estate entrepreneur, author of uh, Money People Deal, The Fastest Way to Real Estate Wealth, and the 2014 winner of the Rich Dad Hall of Fame Award. Now, starting with only $1,200, Stefan has built a multi-million dollar portfolio and has forest partners and earned himself a spot on the self-made list. Stefan has accumulated properties at an alarming pace, controlling 25% of his local niche through his understanding of real estate joint ventures. Now, Stefan's philosophy is simple. Find great deals, build a fantastic team, pay everybody, and create partnerships for life. Now, along with his real estate investing business, Stefan helps uh, real estate investors who want to do their very first deal and the ones that want to take their business to that next level. He does that by teaching them to raise capital, create a personal brand, uh, flipping real estate, and so much more. So please give it up with likes, love, shares, and a virtual flurry of thumbs up and heart icons across the screen for my guest today, Stefan Arno. Welcome to the show, Stefan. Hey, John. How are you? I'm doing well. Yourself? Very good. Thank you for having me. Hey, no worries. Thanks for taking time out of your, I'm sure, busy day to uh, join us live here in the mid-afternoon. And I'm sure you've got a lot of things uh, that you're working on, but uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, oh, we have plenty every day. <laughs> <laughs> 
So what are you working on right now? What, uh, what did I take you away from? Uh, well, I was just out in the field looking at some of the flips we're doing. Um, we've got a student in town for a one day that's in from uh, Regina. Um, I got my sales team downstairs doing a sales meeting. My secretary is on lunch. My COO, he's out at a meeting. The accounting team is downstairs. Um, last night, I finished reading a book. I finished writing a book and uh, also made a – I'm making a program right now to measure entrepreneurs and – what they need to do to go to the next level. So kind of like a personal test. So lots of things happening here, John. We're very busy. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, like I said, I appreciate taking uh, you taking the time to share with the viewers uh, a little bit more about yourself as well as uh, what you have going on in real estate investing and, and really helping uh, the viewers and the other real estate investors, you know, potentially taking it to that next level. The first thing we like to do on the show before we even get too, start, too far is a speed round of questions. Now, um, we were talking just before the show. You mentioned that, yeah, you don't watch a lot of video on the Internet, so you haven't actually seen the show. So uh, best thing is uh, one thing you need to know is you don't have to study for this test, and I'm not going to grade you. So it's just quick, 10 quick questions, and uh, just throw out the, the thing that comes to your mind uh, the quickest. And what, I, what we'll do is... Uh, We'll get the uh, people watching the show at home to play along as well. Just answer your questions in the chat. Uh, just type in your answers as I ask the questions, and we'll just compare your answers to Stefan's at the end of the show or at the end of the session. So you all set to go? Let's do it. All right. Name the book that impacted your life the most. Uh, I'd say Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Now, when you were a young boy, who was your biggest crush, your celebrity uh, crush? Uh, celebrity. Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan. When she had red hair. <laughs> <laughs> what is the either a book, a podcast, or a show that you're into right now? Um, well, right now I just uh, started reading The Way of the Superior Man. Excellent. Uh, do you currently work with any coaches? If so, who? Uh, I've got a, I've got a couple. I've got a, a life coach right now. I have a writing coach right now. Um, I have a, a coach for international business right now, and. Um, those are the three I'm working with right now. Excellent. Uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? Pulp Fiction. And are you currently involved in any masterminds right now? Uh, I'm not. I was last year. Okay. Uh, name a person, either dead or alive, who you'd most like to meet and have dinner with. Uh, two options. One is Jesus, whoever he was, or um, Nikola Tesla. Excellent. Uh, what's your favorite type of vacation, beach or adventure tour? Beach. And the best business advice you ever received? Respect the grind. Keep going. Uh, so the, the last question is a two-part question. Uh, this is what's your favorite, not what do you consume on a regular basis? Uh, is it water, beer, or wine, uh, pizza, wings, or salad? Uh, water from the first category and uh, probably pizza, but I should be eating salad. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So everyone give uh, Stefan uh, a round of applause by hitting that like button, love button. Make sure that you share this feed on, on your Facebook, as well as any business pages or groups that you belong to that you may, that they may find it relevant. And uh, uh, what I like to do, Stefan, just uh, before we get going, I see that there's some people that joined us. I see Duncan Binney's joined us from across the pond. Welcome, Dunny, Duncan. And uh, Carolyn Connors is on as well. Uh, I see that there's some other people that have joined us, but I just can't, uh, in, in looking at my phone, I just can't rec uh, see who is actually watching right at the moment. But welcome, everybody, to the show. If you have any questions for Stefan as we're going along, just type them in the chat, and I'll get to them uh, bef during the show. And if we can't get to them during the show, we'll try to answer them bef uh, at the end of the show uh, in the uh, Facebook chat. As well, as always, make sure you like, love, share this on all your Facebook feeds. And if you're just joining us, I'm speaking with Stefan Arno. He's a, uh, an award-winning real estate entrepreneur, author of Money People Deal, The Fastest Way to Real Estate Wealth, and the 2014 winner of the Rich Dad Hall of Fame Award. Now, starting with only $1,200, Stefan has built a multi-million dollar portfolio for his partners and earned himself a spot on the self-made list. Stefan has accumulated properties at an alarming pace, controlling 25% of his local niche through his understanding of real estate joint ventures. Now, Stefan's philosophy is simple. Find great deals, build a fantastic team, pay everybody, and create partnerships for life. Along with his real estate investing business, Stefan helps real estate investors who want to do their first deal and the ones that really want to take their business to that next level. He does that by teaching them to raise capital, create a personal brand, flipping real estate, and so much more. 
through his advanced implementation coaching. So, uh, Stefan, you know, I, I, I gave a, a few different uh, versions of your intro, but was, is there anything that I missed out on? Is there? Uh, uh, well, there's there's a lot of things going on there. <laughs> uh, so in, in in about 60 seconds, can you just fill in the highlights of your origin story? For anyone yeah, who doesn't know you? I, I mean, I, I started out as a guitar teacher. I, I was making $10,000 a year of, of income, and I wanted to be rich and famous. You know, when I was 16 years old, I wanted to be rich and famous, so I got into music. And when I realized that music is not a way to win in the new millennium, I started studying real estate and learned that anybody can be rich through real estate and business. And that really started my path is studying real estate and business. And I've been on that path for about eight years now. So I'm getting up to the 10 year mark, which is where you really start to become successful. Yep. Uh, so prior to starting your current real estate investing company, I think you started that somewhere around uh, January 2012. You spent some time as an investment representative uh, for an Alberta based company where you helped them raise. I think it was around just over a million dollars in six months. So what did you mm -hmm. actually, what did you learn from that experience and how did it help you when you started your own real estate investing company? Well, one of the biggest things that people need to do if they want to do real estate is you have to learn to raise money. Uh, real estate's a very capital intensive business. You know, it's not like starting a lawn care company where you go buy a lawnmower and start mowing lawns or yeah. you get a shovel and start shoveling snow. Uh, real estate's a business where I help people um, start their real estate businesses and go full time. You have to raise millions of dollars. Yes. So I, I got a, a job uh, in a private equity company in Alberta, and that company was raising ten thousand dollar minimum. So you can imagine one point one million dollars raised ten grand at a time is a lot of selling. Yes. And uh, I learned how to how to call, how to dial the phone, how to do presentations. I uh, got a little bit of public speaking done. And I learned how to dress up properly and ask for money. And uh, r really the big skill there, uh, John, is learning to sell. And sadly, a lot of entrepreneurs jump into business but don't get that formal sales training. Yeah. And because they don't have the formal sales training, their businesses stagnate. And in fact, I coach a lot of people. And one of the programs we're coming with next year is a sales program because so many people skip it. Yeah, sales is an important aspect in any business but more so in, in real estate investing where you're constantly trying to raise money. Um, you know, I, I personally know the two individuals that started that business way back when and a really good friend of mine, uh, Lloyd McDonald, who uh, Lloyd and I worked together uh, back in the early 2000s where he was a uh, uh, looked after corporate sales for uh, one of the company that we worked for at that time. And Lloyd was amazing at building sales teams, building the actual sales process. So I really understand what it is, uh, the things that you actually went through during that time. And I, I'm, I'm quite sure that, uh, you know, you've also learned some systems, some sales systems from that uh, short time uh, at that company. Is that true? Yeah, well, you know, if, if you read my book, Self Made, or maybe you'll get one one day, read the book. Um, it was a really school of hard knocks approach. I mean, I got hired. They had a two week training process or one week. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. There really wasn't any training. Yeah. And then they sent me to the Winnipeg office that had no heat, and they printed <laughs> out 50 names and num numbers on a list from guys who came to events years ago. And I just said, they just said, start calling these guys. So there was no script, no training, no slide deck no presentation wow. and I think I even made my first sale without even being licensed I just got on the phone and just sold the guy um, the first investment I don't even think my license had gone through yet because it was just it was like in startup company mode and uh, you know the good thing about that is when you're in a startup company and you're starting out you get the the real pure skills and a lot of things I had to build that's what so I was that, just gonna, that was, I was just, just going to ask you. Did you build your own systems within that organization that you can then uh, take with you and implement into your own business? Uh, well, that's exactly what happened. You know, I was a guy. They had a database that was eleven thousand names or something, and I just started dialing fifty people every day because my sales trainer told me you got to make calls. So I made fifty to a hundred calls every day. Uh, 50 was the minimum, and then I'd book two meetings, and so every day I had two meetings to do. I'd do my 50 calls, and uh, it worked out, you know, by doing that, by doing 50 calls a day, my income was about 110000 a year. Nice. So, you know, to become a six-figure earner, you have to do the calls, 
And then, you know, the calls and the presentation that I learned there, I applied it to my own business. And now downstairs in my office, I'm on the second floor. On the first floor of my office, we got guys downstairs. Guess what? They do 50 calls every day minimum. So they're doing the system I used to do. And then the capital raising presentation, I've turned it into a book called Money People Deal. Yeah. It's been rebranded now as the $5 million book because it was so effective at raising money. Can you talk a little bit about your decision to venture out on your own in 2012? I mean, were there did you have any fears when you started? Were there negative people around you telling you telling you it was a bad idea? Uh, well, everybody, you know, everybody wants to. They either want to protect you and keep you down, or they want to um, keep you down because they don't want to see you get ahead of them. You know, everybody yeah. wants to see their friend do well, but not better than them. That's right. And um, when I when I quit my corporate job, what was happening was I had a real estate project that took on so much debt and it ended up being credit card debt that the interest payments were bigger than my corporate job checks. <laughs> so suddenly I was forced, I, I was forced to quit. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things happening at the company, yeah. but it seemed like the right thing to do. And I just cut the cord and jumped in and, and went into it. And I quit my job three times in my life, John. Uh, twice I had to go back. The third time I haven't been back in eight years. Excellent. So, you know, I, I don't think I ever will go back. And <laughs> I think it's actually impossible to go back once you've had the freedom for eight or ten years. Yeah, it, it's impossible to go back because you know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. And two, um, I, I think of myself as unemployable. You know, I have a lot of great skill sets, just like yourself. You have a lot of great skill sets, but really on a, on a piece of paper, on a resume, nobody would ever hire people like us, right? Because we are true entrepreneurs and uh, there's more, we see that there's more than just punching a clock. Yeah, well, for me, it's a great, that's a great question or a great statement there, John. For me now, my business is more about purpose and growth and mission. I find a lot of purpose in what I do, so... Um, to, to do my purpose is, is very energizing, it's invigorating, it's exciting. I love seeing people change their lives. I love seeing people win. And you get addicted to it after a while. It's kind of like, it's like flipping houses too. I, yeah. I, I stopped flipping houses for a bit because I was working my other company and I found out I'm addicted to it. I'm back <laughs> and I, I'm just in love with uh, the game. You know, I'm a guy that plays the game for the sake of the game. Yeah. I'll, probably, I'll probably never stop. I'll be 100 years old, I'll probably die on stage uh, speaking to somebody <laughs> <laughs> about flipping the house that you just flipped last year. Uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe it'll be about a house, or maybe it'll be about um, something else. But the the thing about it is, um, it's just it's just passion, and you just you want to do stuff and you want to serve. And to me, business is really about service. Excellent. Uh, if, if you're just joining us, Stefan Arno is an award-winning real estate entrepreneur, author of Money People Deal, The Fastest Way to Real Estate Wealth, and the 2014 winner of the Rich Dad Hall of Fame Award. Now, starting with only $1,200, Stefan has built a multi-million dollar portfolio for his partners and earned himself a spot on the self-made list. Stefan has accumulated properties at an alarming pace, controlling 25% of his local niche through his understanding of real estate joint ventures. Now, Stefan's philosophy is simple. Find great deals, build a fantastic team, pay everybody, and create partnerships for life. Now, along with his real estate investing business, Stefan helps real estate investors who want to do their first deal and the ones that want to take their business to that next level. Now, he does that by teaching them to raise capital, create a personal brand, flipping real estate, and more through his advanced implementation coaching. So please type any questions in Facebook chat if you have any questions you want me to ask Stefan. Uh, and be sure that you like, love, and share this video with all your friends or, and associates on your Facebook feed, as, el as well as any relevant groups and pages that you belong to. Um, so, so Stefan, uh, what were some of the biggest challenges that you were faced when you first got started, and how did you overcome these challenges? Well, I think that there's really three challenges that real estate investors have when they start out. Uh, number one is cash, liquidity. They have no income. So for me, I mean, I, I'm a hardcore entrepreneur, so I live on almost no money, John. Yeah. And um, I have, when I got into real estate full time, I was actually out of the rat race. I had a property that supports my lifestyle. I still have it today. I'm probably going to keep it forever because I don't like to have a job. So mm -hmm. I got myself out of the rat race by my second deal. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So cash, cash and income is a problem. Second problem that people have is 
they don't have any capital to invest, so they run out, run out of money. So that's raising capital is a problem. Now I got around that problem because I learned to sell and I worked for a company and I earned my skills. And then the last problem people have is credibility. You know, nobody knows you, nobody knows to bring deals to you, nobody knows to call you. So I started um, creating a brand, a personal brand, and I started writing blogs every day. Um, the blogs eventually turned into a book and the book turned into a coaching program and the coaching program has turned into seminars and speaking and the seminars and speaking have turned into more books. I'm putting out my third book right now and uh, working on my fourth book. So, you know, all those pieces together, uh, one is income, which I solve by flipping. Second one is capital, which I solve by raising capital. And the third one is, you know, personal brand, which is an ongoing process that has to happen every day. Excellent. Um, so when you first started, you, you focused on fix and flip. So how did you determine that that was going to be the exit strategy for you? I mean, did you, have, you, you didn't really have a construction background, did you? You were a guitar teacher. So how did you determine that exit strategy was what you were going to focus on when you first started? Well, I, I think it, for everybody at the beginning, it's all about the money. You need cash. Yeah. So, you know, you can go out there and buy yourself a buy and hold. And, you know, John, I, I don't know how you feel about real estate, but the truth is this. Small rentals don't cash flow if you have more than 50 percent mortgage on them. That's right. So you can't go out and buy a whole bunch of those. I, I went out and bought a whole bunch and I got myself into a huge problem. The building that supports my lifestyle is only about 50 percent dead and it cash flows mm -hmm. and it pays my lifestyle. So the deal with real estate is. Um, the small properties that people think are cash flowing, they don't cash flow. So yeah. you need, if you want to be a, a real investor, a full-time investor, you've probably got to flip a couple properties every year to live. That's just the fact of the matter. Or you're going to do some rent-to-owns, but I hate people, so I don't want to deal with people and their problems. <laughs> yeah. Um, or you open a property management company, or you're a contractor or something. And I just chose flipping as the most interesting thing. I was an artist in painting as well, and I was selling paintings to live. And then I decided uh, I flipped a house at one or two or three homes, and I realized I can make 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 hours flipping a house. And why would I paint a painting and make a thousand bucks when I can make 15,000 doing a house? That's right. And uh, so when you first started out, how much of the work were you actually doing on those first initial projects? Uh, well, first I hired a contractor, and then that crew collapsed. Okay. Uh, the, the crew collapsed, the contract collapsed, then I became the general contractor. And then I finally found a contractor that is still working with me today. I saw him today, actually. He's been working with me for eight years. So I have about six different contracting crews I work with. They're full crews that can do everything. And um, I briefly did some of the work. I used to be a college pro painter. I used to paint schools in the summertime. So I know some painting, but I do not know... I know today much about construction, but I do not know, like back when I started, I didn't know anything about construction, but my right. first or my second deal I did was a $250,000 rental budget and uh, it was a burned down building. So I got my education by the school of life <laughs> right there really quick. Yeah. So what would, uh, what would you attribute your biggest, uh, what's your biggest contributing factor to your success early on using the, doing this strategy? Well, I think it's a couple of things, John. I mean, one is um, I don't give up. There's a lot of a lot of parts of real estate aren't very fun. There's yeah. a lot of not fun parts, and I I don't give up. And I think the other thing that I've had that other people didn't get is I was desperate. I had to succeed. Right. And there was I went to the seminars, I went to courses, I went to all these things, but I wasn't desperate until I put myself into a bunch of seminar debt, and I had to succeed. And suddenly, you know, I think I think debt can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. Um, if you have enough debt to motivate you and you must succeed, you will succeed. But if you don't, a lot of people don't have any pressure. And I think real estate investing is a wish for them yeah. and it's not a must. That's so right. for me, it became a must very quickly. And even today, you know, John, I have 10 employees in my office. Guess what, dude? We got to win every day because... You got 10 mouths to feed. Some people say I have a family. I say, screw your family. I got 10 people to feed. That's you right. Know, you, got, you got two kids. Who cares? You know, this is 10 people, man. And they got families. Every single one of them has a family. So, you know, it's a, it's a big deal. You got to feed yourself and feed all the people on your team. Yeah, once you start to scale your business, now you're, 
your business is ultimately responsible for a lot of other people's lives. And uh, so you have to take it extremely serious and you have to commit 110 uh, percent every single day to to winning. Like you have to yeah. have that winning attitude every single day to make sure that, uh, you know, your business is going to succeed so that the people that you employ are going to be taken care of. Exactly. And, and the crazy thing now, John, is it's not about me and it's not about uh, not about my employees so much. It's about the families of those people, right? You have right. to support those people. And it brings my level of play up. It brings everybody's level of play up and everybody has to get better. Or, you know, you got two options, either go up in business or you can go down and be small. That's right. And I've decided because of service, I believe I have to go up because I want to serve more people. Um, if I want to be selfish, I could be small and just keep the money. That's right. And out of the, let's, let's say the first five uh, homes that you ever did in your construction company or in your real estate investing, how many of those were, uh, you know, big winners? And was there any in that first five where, you know, you, you learned a lot of lessons and maybe you didn't make any money or maybe you lost a little bit of money? No, the first I'd say probably between 12, de first 12 deals or so were all winners. Okay. Um, I was very, very meticulous, very um, almost neurotic on the buy side. You know, I, I would almost over-research the deals. So I was very, very good with the first dozen. Now, where I did run into some problems later is when I started doing 30 deals a year. Now there were some problems because now I had to, I took on stuff I shouldn't have taken on. Right. Trying to scale and... I think scaling a real estate business, real estate investment business is one of the hardest things to do because you can't really scale the amount of work you do in a day, but you can scale the size of the deals. Yes. So what I've learned is, you know, I went from doing one deal, then I did one deal, then I did a dozen deals, then I did two dozen deals, then I did 30 deals in a year. And then I realized doing 30 deals is stupid. And now in my business, we're probably going to do in our office 52 deals this year. Yep. But it's going to be probably 40 wholesales and a dozen flips, but okay. they're bigger flips. So we're going to do some bigger flips, about one a month. And then we're going to do about 40 wholesales because we have lots of clients. I've got clients all across the country, about 5,000 investors in the database that all want deals. Right. And so I, we can wholesale all day, but to do actual projects... I think doing more than 12 is, is crazy. Like I think back to my younger years and all you get is problems when you start going to 30, 40, 50. Your management team has to get exponentially better. Yeah. Excellent. If you guys are just joining us, I'm speaking with Stefan Arno. He's an award-winning real estate entrepreneur, owner of Money People Deal, the fastest way to real estate wealth and 2014 winner of the Rich Dad Hall of Fame Award. Now, starting with only $1,200, Stefan has built a multi-million dollar portfolio for his partners and earned himself a spot on the self-made list. Stefan has accumulated properties at an alarming pace, controlling 25% of his local niche through his understanding of real estate joint ventures. Now, Stefan's philosophy is simple. Find great deals, build a fantastic team, pay everybody, and create partnerships for life. Now, along with his real estate investing business, Stefan helps real estate investors who want to do their first deal and the ones that really want to take their business to that next level. Now, he does that by teaching them to raise capital, create personal brands, uh, flipping real estate, and much more through his advanced implementation coaching. So if you have any questions, just type them in the chat, Facebook chat, and what we'll do is we'll get to them throughout the show. And if we can't get to them during the show, we'll just answer them after the show has already been aired in the, in the Facebook comment section. And as always, be sure to like, love, share this video with all your friends and associates on your Facebook feed and any relevant groups that you belong to. Just do a couple of quick shout outs. Uh, Barry Schimmel's joined us. Uh, welcome, Barry. Joanne has joined us as well. Uh, David Frank has joined us. And uh, Duncan Binney says... Uh, uh, sounds like some great advice. So thanks everybody for joining us. Like I said, if just type in the chat, if you want to, uh, ask any questions, uh, other than that, we'll just get right back to it. So Stefan, typically when it comes to scaling or growing your business, uh, definitely specifically in real estate investing, uh, it takes leverage, not only leveraging other people's money, but, uh, other people's time as well. So can you talk about your strategy for leveraging money or raising capital? Well, uh, Warren Buffett says, you know, more fortunes have been lost to liquor and leverage than anything else. And 
I personally don't really like leverage that much in real estate. I find most investors I meet are way over leveraged. Yes. And a lot of them get into problems. So I do my flips all cash. Um, they're done with partners who supply the cash and they get a preferred rate. Okay. So these are private people. They're not really banks. And if there's a problem, I can negotiate with them and we're okay. So that's, that's number one is I don't like leverage. Um, I don't like money leverage too much. I think that you have to have the right financing to do this business. And um, you don't want to be over leveraged because you're going to be out of business pretty quick if you're over leveraged. Um, second thing is I believe in leveraging time. So one thing that I think I've done kind of okay is that I've got a lot of people around me who do different things. And people say, how do you get so much done? Well, it's because I have other people doing things and because we have other people doing things. Um, a deal takes me about four hours, John. So if I want to flip a house, it takes four hours of my time yes. and about 2,000 hours of other people's time. Right. So that is tremendous leverage in having the people and the systems and the teams set up. That's the leverage I prefer. And I'm really a businessman and an entrepreneur who happens to do real estate as a product. I don't think of myself as a real estate guy because real estate is just bricks and sticks. Yeah, I'm the exact same way. Um, I'm, I'm an, a true entrepreneur, and one of the businesses that I'm involved in is real estate. And a lot of people, especially in the real estate game, and even the people that aren't involved in real estate, uh, once they discover that you're doing real estate, then they sort of pinhole you as, oh, you're a real estate investor, not you're, a, you're an entrepreneur or a business person. You're just doing that real estate investing game. And I always, uh, try to explain to them that no, I'm an entrepreneur. Real estate is just the product or the service that I offer people. Just like you offer massage therapy, or you offer, or, or you know, sell your bricks at your brick and mortar store. It's really no different. The only difference is the product or the service that we offer. Exactly. Yes, and I think it's very tough, John, when you start branding yourself. You do get thrown in the real estate bucket sometimes. Yeah, and. Especially once you go outside of real estate, like in real estate in Canada, you know, let's say I'm a mini celebrity. I say a C-list celebrity or D-list celebrity. If I go into another space or another stage, they pigeonhole you into, oh, you're just a real estate guy. And that's something that I'm working on right now. I'm coming out with a book on negotiation right now, a book on sales next. Um, and I'm branding myself now outside of real estate because – I don't want to be just in the real estate bucket. In fact, I don't even really like real estate much. Um, <laughs> Neither do and, I. And I, I say this to most people. Nobody loves real estate. We love the benefits. That's right. Of real estate. And it's same with me. I love the benefits. I, I don't like dealing with tenants, trash, toilets, termites. Uh, I, don't, I don't like that. I like the benefits, though. Yeah, and um, that's one of the reasons why I started this show five days a week. And I only dedicate one day a week to real estate investing. The rest of it is ded dedicated towards entrepreneurship and helping entrepreneurs build and grow their businesses using a variety of strategies to do just as you were talking about, get myself out of that pigeonhole as I'm the rent to own guy. I don't want to be the rent to own guy. Rent to own is just a product or the service that I offer. I'm an entrepreneur or a business person. So one of the strategies is doing this, um, has created this show and uh, you know talking to a lot of entrepreneurs because as I was going through a lot of the seminars for the last five years, none of them are real estate seminars. They're all business related seminar seminars, but they pigeonhole you as a real estate investor because they don't think of you as an entrepreneur, which you know it, it's a struggle uh, repositioning yourself or rebranding yourself as something else other than what that real estate investing. I don't know if you're, you're finding the same thing or not. Well, let me add to that. So, so John, right now, um, I, I've done a flipping business for years. I still do it. And because I've got success and I've won awards in magazines and the Rich Dad Award and all these things, people call me and they ask for help. And initially, I didn't want to coach anybody. And you know, I said no, but then the calls kept coming. And then I started coaching people for free, but nobody showed up. And then I started <laughs> yes. charging. I started charging big money and people started doing their homework and becoming successful, which is a big surprise. Yeah. And what's interesting is um, my curriculum, my program that I teach people, it's not about real estate. It's about these skills. It's about raising capital, which is selling. It's about negotiating, which is selling. Mm -hmm. There's selling. There's marketing. 
And the last one is buy, fix, sell. I have a curriculum. And the curriculum is all entrepreneurship. None of it is actually real estate. Very, very little, probably 10% of the curriculum is actually about bricks and sticks. Most of it is about how do you become an effective person? How do you be an effective communicator, effective salesman, effective marketer? That's really what it's about, especially negotiating. Most people can't negotiate the living daylights out of them. And they call me and say, Stefan, there's no deals in my market. Well, buddy, there's deals every day going down. But you're just bad at negotiating. Yeah, the biggest so, the biggest challenge I have seen in real estate investing is not people not knowing how to analyze deals. You can teach somebody to analyze a deal in a very short amount of time, actually in probably less than a day. It's all of the soft skills that will help make a person a better real estate investor, but they're also the soft skills that will help make a person a better entrepreneur. So negotiating. Exactly. Uh, presenting to people, you know, how to effectively talk to people, how to uh, under how to listen to people instead of just verbal diarrhea, like how to listen to what they're saying, un- uncover what their pains or frustrations are, and be able to frame your solution uh, as something that's going to help them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And really, it's a it's a personal development program. I mean, that's what that's what real estate is. It's how do you develop as a person? Because um, if you want to make more money, you just got to become a better person to the marketplace, add more value, bring more value. That's right. Uh, that's that's what it's about. It's not about this magical unicorn that's just going to bring you money just because you asked for it. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, everybody's sold on the dream, but in reality, there's only a very small fraction of the people that actually see any level of success. And those are the people that understand it really is less about the real estate and more about those other skills that they need to develop in order to be a successful successful at real estate investing mm-hmm. or any business. So if you guys are just joining me, joining us, I'm speaking with uh, Stefan Arno. He's an award-winning real estate entrepreneur, author of Money People Deal, The Fastest Way to Real Estate Wealth, and a 2014 winner of the Rich Dad Hall of Fame Award. Now, starting with only $1,200, Stefan has built a multi-million dollar portfolio for his partners at and has earned himself a spot in the self-made list. Now, Stefan has accumulated properties at an alarming pace, controlling 25% of his local niche through his understanding of real estate joint ventures. Now, Stefan's philosophy is simple. Find great deals, build a fantastic team, pay everybody, and create partnerships for life. Now, along with his real estate investing business, Stefan helps real estate investors who want to find their first deal and the ones that want to take their business to that next level. He does that by teaching them to raise capital, create a personal brand, flipping real estate, and more through his advanced implementation coaching. So if you have any questions, just type them in the uh, Facebook comment section, and we'll get to them during the show. And uh, if, if we don't have any time to get to them during the show, we'll answer them after the show has already been completed. Or make, just make sure you tag one of us on a question if you're watching this on replay. And as always, be sure to like, love, share this video with all your friends and associates on your Facebook feed, as well as any relevant groups or pages that you belong to. I see that Rob Whitney just joined us. Uh, Joanne Joanne has a comment that uh, she can relate to uh, some of the stuff that you were saying earlier, uh, especially with regards to the seminar debt. (laughs) So There you go. You got to go at some point. That's right. You have to uh, uh, learn the necessary skills in order to, uh, you know, make that next step. So, So, Stefan, as part of your business model, uh, you've been educating and helping investors across Canada uh, reach success for themselves. Can you give an example of someone uh, who reached out to you? Uh, you know, maybe what were their challenges and how you helped them overcome those challenges? Well, I think I think the biggest thing that most people have when they come and work with me and they want to become successful in real estate is it's really about expectations. You know, these people. Um, don't have the proper expectations set. You know, one thing I do in my program, and here's some of the secret sauce, I say, you got to make 50 calls a week. Yeah. And we actually, you know, the coaches that coach under me and work with people, and I, I coach still today, Monday I've got some coaching calls too. It's all about calls, man. Are you doing your calls every week? And, you know, it's funny. People say, oh, I know I have to do my calls. Well, you're not doing them, bro. Hmm. you got to do your calls. you got to do your calls. I, it's 50 calls, 10 offers a week. And so it's expectations. How much money did you raise? Well, were you expecting to raise any money? Well, now you're coaching with me. I expect to raise this much by Monday. 
I expect that you do this many calls by Friday. I expect that you have this many contractors interviewed. And I think that real estate is not rocket science. It's not rocket surgery. It's not difficult. <laughs> No. But what is difficult is doing your push-ups, doing your sit-ups, doing your laps. You got to you got to treat it like going to the gym and having a personal trainer because that's the only way you can get some performance out of somebody. And even people after they work with me, they slip back into their previous performance because they need somebody pushing them to to perform, you know? Like it's just like athletes, they have professional coaches on teams. And if you look at the NHL teams or NBA teams or the golf, uh, you know, PGA golfers, they've all got coaches. And yeah. it's, it's so interesting to see people, they say, well, I want to make a million dollars, but I don't want to pay for a coach. And it's like, buddy, what are you smoking? Like, yeah. you must be smoking something and give me some. Yeah, so it's really, it's all about that accountability factor as well as being consistent on a persistent basis. And I think that's where a lot of people fail is the consistent persistency. They get, uh, you know, they go to a seminar, they get all ramped up or they meet with a the coach, they're all excited and they'll go out and they'll, you know, just like a rabbit, they're, they're, you know, they start to do stuff at a rapid pace and then all of a sudden they don't do it for days or weeks and then you try to pick it up for a day or two and then they, it falls down again for, you know, another month, try to pick it up for a few days. There's no consistency in what they're trying to achieve as opposed to even if it was just starting out with a small uh, amount of tasks, something very manageable on a consistent, persistent basis, doing it day in, day out, build that habit, and then increasing it from there. Mm -hmm. and, and the second thing is expectations, John. I remember when I hired my first real estate coach uh, years ago to turn me around, he said, how many deals do you want to do? I said, I want to do 100 deals. And he said, okay, how much are the houses in your market? I said, they're this much. He said, you need to raise between three and five million dollars from no more than two people and go out there and do it. And that blew my mind because at the time I was thinking about raising 20 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand. Yeah. I was not thinking about raising three to five million dollars. But within a couple of months, I had it because I expected it and I followed the steps to get it. That's right. You had to get a clear goal, a clear vision, and you just broke it down into manageable tasks and just perform those tasks day in, day out on a consistent, persistent basis, which I, people look, will look at that, that goal, that long term, that big goal. And then, but the, what they fail to do is to actually break it down into manageable bite sized tasks that they can achieve on a regular basis. And I think that's where a lot of them fail. Mm -hmm. So when you're working with your private clients or, or training these groups, uh, what are some of the specific things that you're working with them on? Um, so what type of things that uh, will you walk them through, say, on a weekend course or a one-on-one -on -one coaching? I know that one-on-one -on -one stuff is typically, it, it's really tailored to the individual, but is there generally some, some things that you can talk about that you work with uh, people on a regular basis? Well, I think the biggest thing is helping people get past their own bullshit and putting the, the whole business together. Right. Cause, you know, like, nobody, you know, I have people say like, well, what are you going to teach me in coaching? Well, I'm not teaching you anything, buddy. We're getting it done. Yeah. Right. It's not about, oh, I'm going to learn this magical thing. There's really no magic to it. It's, it's the same as somebody who goes to the store to bake a cake and they buy the flour and the eggs and the sugar and the water. And then they say, well, I know real estate and it's all sitting on the counter and there's no cake. <laughs> well, we got to bake the cake, man. I mean, we got to stir and we got to do it in the right order and put yeah. it into the oven. And it's all about, um, it's all about putting it together. And I'd say most of it, John, is mindset, to tell you the truth. Yes. Because, um, you know, like I, I have platinum students. These are guys who are coaching with me personally for a year. And we, we do a call every week with the platinum guys. And I say, did you get your 50 calls done? And they say, well, I got 30. I say, well, why the heck did you do 30? How many offers did you get? You get your 10? Well, I don't know. I got four. And I say, well, you know you got to do 10. Why aren't you doing 10? And, you know, this is human nature, right? Human beings, we, we want to conserve energy. We don't want to spend energy. That's right. So there's, there's the, the pieces that we have to do, but a lot of it's mindset. A lot of people don't think that they deserve the income. They don't think they deserve to raise the money. A lot of people are scared of raising money because they don't believe that they should have the money. A lot of people, I talked to a guy the other day, he said he wanted to make $250,000 in real estate and he didn't want to sell anything. And I said, well, buddy, 
<laughs> you know, you're probably not going to make above 30 grand yeah. without selling something. And this guy was an entrepreneur, John. He had other businesses. He said, I don't want to sell myself. I'm like, well, what are you smoking? You have to sell if you want to live, if you want to make money. I mean, you either sell your time or you sell something else. Yeah, even if, you have, a jo- even if you have a job, you're selling yourself because you're selling your services to your employer. And the, the buy better, the hour. Every the, hour he's buying it. Yeah, the better <laughs> the better you are at selling yourself, the more money you'll make at, at, a, at your job as an hourly wage, hopefully. Uh, but you, when you translate that into entrepreneurship or into uh, real estate investing, the better you are at selling yourself, the better you are at raising money, closing on deals, attracting opportunities. You know, it comes hand in hand. It doesn't matter if you're an employee or you're an entrepreneur, real estate investor. It doesn't matter. Everyone's selling themselves. You sell yourself to, to go out on a date. You sell yourself to your, your potential wife. I mean, she's going to buy you. She's going to buy into you actually getting married, right? So well, John, all- they, all, they always say this. They say you can tell how good of a salesman he is by how beautiful his girlfriend is <laughs> or how, how pretty his wife is, you know. And yeah. that's kind of a funny thing to say, but... It's true, you know, you got to sell everything, man. Everything's sold. We're talking on computers. Those were sold. I have headphones. This was sold. There's paint on the walls. That was sold. The flooring in the room was sold. I have a book. This was sold. Yeah. The paper in the book. Everything must be sold. I have uh, salt water in my hair. That was sold. The bottle was sold. Everything's sold. And if you have a problem with selling, you're just going to be poor. <laughs> True that. Uh, if you guys are just joining us, I'm speaking with Stefan Arno. He's an award-winning real estate entrepreneur, author of Money D- People Deal, the fastest way to real estate wealth, and the 2014 winner of the Rich Dad Hall of Fame Award. Now, starting with only $1,200, Stefan has built a multi-million dollar portfolio for his partners and has earned himself a spot in the self-made list. Now, Stefan has accumulated properties at an alarming pace, controlling 25% of his local niche through his understanding of real estate joint ventures. Now, Stefan's philosophy is simple. Find great deals, build a fantastic team, pay everybody, and create partnerships for life. Now, along with his real estate investing business, Stefan helps real estate investors who want to do their first deal and the ones that want to take their business to the next level. He does that by teaching them to raise capital, create a personal brand, flipping real estate, and much more through his advanced implementation coaching. So if you have any questions that you want me to ask Stefan, just type them in the chat, and we'll try to get to them before the end of the show. And also, make sure that you like, love, share this video with all your friends and associates on your Facebook page, as well as any relevant groups or pages that you belong to. And I see that uh, Angel Peterson has joined us. Welcome, Angel, to the show and everybody else that's still joining us. Uh, So, Stefan, what would you say are some of the biggest mistakes that you see the majority of investors making as they're just uh, getting started or trying to take their business to the next level? And And then turn around, what and let them know what they could do to avoid those mistakes. Well, one thing I see all the time is I see a complete lack of education. I mean, people get into real estate and they think that they're gonna save a thousand bucks by going to a week, or not going to a weekend seminar and just buying a deal and then they lose 25,000 in the market. And then they never wanna do it again. So, I mean, they say in the military, an ounce of sweat will save you a pint of blood. And it's the same way in real estate investing is a complete lack of education is a very scary thing. I have people come to my events that have no idea how much money they're making on their flips and they're making 1% profit or 0% or they don't know. Yes. And uh, that's, that scares the living daylights out of me. Um, another thing that I see is lack of education is um, people plateau and then for some reason they just stay at that plateau forever and they don't do anything to you know, grow. And if you're plateaued, chances are you're going down, you're getting worse. That's right. So that's another thing I see all the time is people, you know, I, I talked to a guy the other day, he said, well, I've done 30 deals in the last 30 years. Well, buddy, that's not very good. That's one deal a year, <laughs> right? You it's know, pretty you easy this, to do that. Well, you did the same same year 30 times in a row. Yeah. You know, my dad used to be an entrepreneur and he wasn't very good, my father. He did the same year in business 16 times in a row, but he said he was in business for 16 years. Yeah. Well, you know, you're not really adding anything if you're doing the same thing over and over again. So I think that number one is people get in with no education. They have no idea what they're doing. And the second problem is they're plateaued. And often I have people saying, well, I, uh, I don't know how to raise money. I'm, I don't know how to find deals. I don't know. Uh, those are the two biggest ones. I don't know where to find money. I don't know find deals. Realistically, what you have to do is improve yourself as a person 
And when you improve your skills, like your negotiating skills, your money raising skills, you get some accountability, get a coach, whatever it is, that's where you see the lives change. That's where you see people go up to the next level. That's where you see um, you know, people getting to quit their jobs. A lot of people, after working with me for a year, they don't have jobs anymore, man. Yeah. They've got businesses now. And, and that's awesome to see people break out of that plateau and go up or see people get educated and know what to look for in the market. Excellent. So uh, for someone just getting started in real estate investing or wanting to take their business to the next level, uh, can you give us some tips um, on how the, and stuff that they can actually uh, take, take away and implement you know, almost immediately, some action plans uh, from today's episode, some things that they can implement into their business, into the real estate, you know, as a few tips that they could actually start and take action on? Yeah, well, number one, I think you got to go out and get as many books as you can. Um, I'm back on the book a week plan. I think you got to go and get a book. You know, here's one of my books. People, people have to read. So if you want to get into the business, start reading. Um, that's, that's the biggest thing. Second thing is join a real estate club or a group. You can go to a meetup.com and start getting some friends who are in the business. Um, the next thing is I think you probably want to start going to some seminars and don't be afraid to spend a little bit of money, boys and girls. I mean, spend, you know, 500 to a couple thousand on a seminar and check it out. Um, I think it's important that you invest in yourself and, you know, John, you might've heard this story before where, you know, if you see a Coke machine and it says out of order on the machine, you're probably not going to put any money in the machine, right? right. Right yeah. now, if the machine's out of order, no one's putting money into it. Well, you know, most people are out of order, and because you're out of order, no one's going to put money into you. So you got to get in order. Start reading. Start joining groups. Um, you know, spend a little bit of money on some seminars. Not a lot. You don't have to spend a hundred grand. Just spend a little bit and check out. Check out some stuff and really start researching. And then when the time is right, I think it's good to enter the market. Uh, with professional help and with a professional coach bringing you through the jungle. Yes. Um, because my first two years in the business, John, I probably missed out on 600000 of opportunity of real profit. If I bought six houses in Winnipeg, houses at the time were fifty grand. I could have bought them 0% down and 40-year amortization. I probably could have bought six of them right away wow. and got six hundred grand. Instead, I did a whole bunch of stupid things because I didn't spend any money on any help. Yeah, so there's two things there that you, you that you mentioned. I just want to touch on. Uh, one is investing in yourself. Uh, one of my coaches is, is famous for saying this, and, and I say it to everybody as as much as I can, is that a lot of people will try to uh, cheap their way to a success. They all want to be successful, but they want to be cheap on their way, meaning they're not investing in the right courses, they're not investing in coaches, they're not investing in the things that are going to make them successful. And the second thing is a lot of people will invest twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, you know, probably like you did, like I did, into the real estate investing game without actually having a coach first. I think it's important to lay a little groundwork, maybe do the weekend seminar for five hundred or a thousand dollars or whatever. But if you're actually gonna get into real estate investing and you wanna really get into it, I think before you spend that twenty, thirty, forty grand on a on a seminar. I think you invest the five, 10 grand, whatever it is on an actual coach first that's been there, done that, that you can actually work with and that can teach you a lot of the things that you're going to learn in a seminar because you need to determine, is this real estate business for you? And you're much better off investing just $5,000 to figure that out versus $40,000 to learn that it's really not for you. Yeah. And John, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but in my career, I've spent over three hundred grand on non-traditional education. Yeah. So that's in in eight eight years, eight nine years. I spent three hundred thousand over that time. My right hand man in my office, John Eric, he walked in and walked around here quickly. He spent over a hundred grand on his education, and that's not university, dude. No. no. That's that's seminars, uh, mostly seminars in coaching and mentoring. We didn't even include books. I got a bookshelf next door, a whole wall of my house is books, you know, so if you want to be great, if you want to be fantastic, you know, you got to pay to play, dude, but, you know, I, I'm not going to disclose what my income is, but I can guarantee you that the 300 grand is certainly worth it. That's right. Um, 
you know, if you want to actually play ball, if you want to be a player, you know, you've got to bring that bet to the table. And, and I like to say this, you know, everybody wants to be a gangster until it's time to do some gangster stuff. <laughs> you know, like, buddy, do you really want to play? If you want to play, let's go. That's right. All right, Stefan. Uh, that's all the time that we have today. I personally want to thank you for taking uh, time out of your day and being with us and sharing uh, with the audience everything uh, everything that we talked about. Uh, I'll post it some co some contact links in the comment section as well as when I post this to the website and YouTube will actually uh, get all the contact links in, in the show notes as well so people can connect with you should they have any questions or want to follow up with you. So everyone show uh, Stefan some love by hitting that like button, love button. Be sure to share this with your friends and family uh, on your associated uh, business pages on Facebook as well. And Stefan, it's been great having you on the show. I want to thank you and I look forward to catching up with you again in the near future. And uh, just I'll just get everyone to stick around and I'll be back with in just a minute with uh, today's closing remarks. So again, Stefan, thanks a lot. Thank you, John. Appreciate being on the show. All right. Now, thanks for joining me on today's John A. McCabe show, where we work with entrepreneurs, business owners, authors, experts, and speakers, get seen, get heard, get noticed anywhere, anytime, on any device. Now, also known as the Authority Acceleration Blueprint. Now, if you're someone who's looking to take your business to the next level and want to get some coaching advice, why not apply to be a guest on today's show? Now, for most entrepreneurs, we want to create a life of our own, create our own path and do what we can to reach our own desired outcome, which is generally freedom, freedom to choose what we want to do, when we want to do it and with whom we want to do it. A life that's full of options and choices where we worry less about money and more about the quality of time that we spend with others. Now, a great way to make that happen is to leverage other people's knowledge, time and skill sets. Step one to reaching our fr freedom life is to realize that you can't do it alone. Working with a coach or being involved in masterminds is a great way for entrepreneurs to move their business forward. Now, a coach can help you shorten the time frame to get you from where you are to where you want to be, while being part of a mastermind is meant to bring entrepreneurs together, all with the goal of helping each other move forward with their business. Now, the second step to creating the life you envision for yourself as an entrepreneur is to implement systems into your business so you can streamline your operations, leverage systems, and free up your time to focus on your family having fun, and the highest leverage activities in your business. You know, the activities that get you the biggest return on your time invested, the ones that truly make you money. Now, sometimes we just don't know what systems we need, how to implement those systems, or even have the time to find out what is needed. Now, working with a coach or consultant that understands, uses, and specializes in systems that can streamline your operations can help save you time, aggravation, and make you a lot more money. Now, for example, having a system or strategy that allows you to leverage just 15 hours of your time into enough repurposed content to get you seen, get you heard, get you noticed anywhere, anytime on any device is a great example of leverage. Now, just imagine a system where you invest just 15 hours of your time and the end result is your number one best-selling author. You have enough content that's going to get you seen, get you heard, get you noticed anywhere, anytime on any device. You have a successful podcast. Now it's automatically attracting more attention, giving you giving more value and generating more leads, which enables you to attract an abundance of paying customers. Now, this is also known as the Authority Acceleration Blueprint. Now, to find out more about the Authority Acceleration Blueprint coaching program or mastermind, then contact me via my website at johnamccabe.com or connect with me through my show's Facebook page. Now again, thank you for joining us on today's show and I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's show when I have another great guest on discussing their business and accelerating their authority. So have yourself an amazing day and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.